All right, so here's my part two of the testimony. Let me wrap it up for you guys. So, um, so my new apartment, I got my new apartment. I'm happy. I have absolutely no furniture, no, no nothing. But anybody who's been through things, who's been homeless, who who been through so much, don't even care if they ain't got nothing but a blanket or even a jacket. You will sleep on that floor because you've been through the struggle and and you made it out. You know what I'm saying? So you you don't really care. You just like you know whatever. So I'm so um, happy just to be out. I'm in this apartment. I, I had my friend with me. We laughed. And, you know we were just like yeah, hey, you know excited. And I'm, I'm working. And y'all, let me tell you something when you by yourself. When you by yourself, you can honestly, you have some type of clarity or you're, you're just thinking. And I went back into the, huh, it's quiet in my house and there's something missing. I went back to it, there's something missing. And um, I didn't know exactly what was missing but i knew i was gonna figure it out because i got tired of feeling that my family ended up having a um party they did a vision board party and i remember saying that i was gonna do e eat was eat pray love and i remember watching the movie and because she was searching i was like oh yeah i'm like julia roberts i'm searching too and I didn't know what I was searching for, but I was open to any, I was open to it, anything. So I'm working at this job and it happened for me so quickly. I think came like, you know, working at this job and I just started having questions about God. Because in my mind, if you were out there, that means you saw me go through all this crap that I was going through. And I want to know, I want to know where he was. Did he really love me? What was going on? Because I was just out here, you know, just out here. And um, I knew that I was protected by certain things. But I knew growing up, I was tormented by so many things. I would look at my sisters and my brothers, honestly, and I would be like, I just had went through so much in my life, y'all, like so much. And to me, it made no sense because I'm looking at myself. You know, you look at yourself, you be like, that person's a for real deal sinner. Like, I don't do all that stuff, but I'm looking at them. I'm like, they blessed. Meanwhile, I'm a mess. Bless me a mess. And, you know, I'm open to a lot of stuff, and I'm watching everybody get gifts. And when I say gifts, I mean, like, they're prospering in, in their careers, in their lives, and I'm just struggling. I mean, when I say struggle, I'm just struggling. I said, there can't be no type of God that would do this to me. No, it can't be. It's no way possible that you could love somebody and watch them go through so much. You know, even think about it, I was, it was just so much I went through. I, I couldn't understand from being raped to being tormented, uh, to being molested, um, to being tossed away like a rag doll, to being, you know, drugged. It was just so much. And it was nothing that I asked for. I've never asked anybody to rape me, to molest me. I've never asked any of these people to do these things, to treat me any type of way except for the nice person I am. Because I consider myself a very, you know, a nice person. Um, I understand why when it came to school, things were very difficult for me and it, it took me time to do things. I didn't understand why me. And I was hurt, y'all. I, I couldn't understand what type of God does that? And um, even though I would say that, I always had the fear of God in me. And I just wanted to know why. I guess you could say that was my goal. I just wanted to know why. So I started to do my, my journey. I still remember my dream, the rapture dream. I still remember my heaven and hell dreams. And I started watching YouTubes on heaven and hell. I started watching testimonies. And then I started asking my father and my mother about you know, Jesus and who Jesus is. Because I was like, who is Jesus? I, I want to know who this person is. And um, 
they would tell me, they were like, oh, yeah, Jesus, uh, they think, you know, like, a human is God. I was like, no way. No, they don't. And I'm like, my parents were like, yeah, yeah, they do. And so I was like, man, that's crazy. And so I didn't really have any answers. But what I had was this guy that sit behind me at work. His name was, let's see what I'm going to call him, because I don't hate to say I'll call him Ezra. So this guy named Ezra who sat behind me at work. And um, Ezra would always be at work. He had like, I ain't gonna lie y'all. When I first met Ezra, I said, he's a hot mess, stay away from him. Because he was always like really, really anxious. He had all type of sickness and stuff going on with him. I was like, yeah, always, yeah, always got something going on. Always. But, um... He was very delightful to talk to. He had a lot of knowledge for history. He would always be reading his Bible when I come in. If I ain't never asked somebody, I'd rather get this mess. I'm going to find it out on my own. You know, I've been alone. Let me do it alone. So I started um, reading the Bible. And I was like, I'm going to read it from the beginning to the end. So I was stuck on that. I had started reading the Bible. I skipped Genesis because I thought in my mind I knew Genesis. Who needs to read Genesis? It's about the beginning. Who needs to read it? So I skipped Genesis, and I'm, I'm reading the story, and I'm like, oh, I watched Prince of Egypt. Who really needs to read Exodus? So you see I'm, like, skipping stuff. And so I'm still uh, watching these videos, Heaven and Hell, and then I'm having this whole conflict about, am I really about to believe this? Like, oh, no. So um, I remember uh, Ezra would be like, he would, um, I would go and ask Ezra questions because he had a Bible. I figured he knew, you know, because it had been a long, long, y'all. I'm not even kidding. I'm sorry if you're watching this video. You were my friend. I had not seen no Bible in your home, in your, in your hand. Ain't, ain't heard nothing about Jesus. None of that. God, no. Ain't had nobody pray with me. I ain't had none of that. And it had been some years, y'all. I'm not kidding. Years. And, um, and they could have been doing it out of respect. For, I think she's Muslim. I don't know. I ain't hear nothing about that. Okay. All I knew I was going through some trials and tribulations. And um, I remember Ezra was like, um, I would go and ask Ezra questions like, hey, Ezra, if I wanted to find out who this Jesus guy is, how would I do it? And I remember Ezra was like, okay. He said, he said, okay. So you want to start out with the first, the four Gospels, the Gospels. So let me tell you something. When you tell somebody who's a non-believer the Gospels, you will be naming them, okay? Because we're going to look for something that says four Gospels or Gospels that said four. So uh, I was like, the Gospels? So I'm flipping through um, my Bible app at the time. And I was just like, I don't even know what this is. And he said, that's when he told me, Matthew, John, Luke, and Mark. I was like, why this? He said, it, it'll tell you about Jesus. I remember reading it and being like, he did all this? It's crazy. And then I remember um, I skipped, I actually skipped some of the stuff in there too because I was like, oh, this sounded like, you know, the work wasn't there. I was trying to find it, but the work wasn't there. And then I started really asking more questions. I started Googling stuff. I wanted to understand who he was, why he wasn't there for me, what happened. You know, I'm just looking him up and just, I want to I wanna know him. I really did. And um, I remember I would go to Ezra, like, all the time, ask him questions, y'all. At this point, Ezra probably, like, she only come to work at this point to ask me questions. Now, keep in mind, we work at the state capitol, so you're not supposed to even talk about church and God and stuff like that. But Ezra was always very happy to answer all my questions. Very, very happy. So I said, all right, Ezra. So we got to the point where Ezra, Ezra always left at like a certain time during the daytime with this other guy. And um, I ain't never care where they went, but they just always left. So Ezra was like one day, was like, hey. I was like, hey. He's like, so... We leave about 1, 1 15, 1 30, and we go to the very top of the building and we pray. And we talk about the Bible. I'm like, what? 
So, I, like, to me, I'm like, that's right up my alley. So, I started going with um, Ezra up there, and we talked about the Bible. And really, I felt like it was more for me, because when I got up there, I'm like, Psh, what about this? And this, 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 because I had so many questions. I had questions about the Trinity. I had questions about, because I didn't understand the Trinity, or what's going in there. And yes, whoever's reading this, yes, it's the testimony. There's the Trinity inside the Bible. No, if you want me to explain where the origins of Trinity came from, fine. But I also have a video about the Trinity and it's explaining. So, um, I was like, okay, this is right up my, my alley. So, I'm asking them all these questions. And some of the questions they have the answer for, some of them didn't. So, I had to do a lot of research. And I was scared because I was like, my family might disown me. Uh, you know... No, I was getting deeper and deeper, and I just, I guess I kept looking for a reason not to believe in Jesus. And there were still some questions that I had that I just couldn't get answered, and I just didn't understand. Um, one day, I had this bright idea that I was going to write down all these churches and visit them. And I didn't visit all of them, but I visited a lot of them. And I'm just like, okay, fine. I remember... Um, just reading the Bible and the whole time y'all the whole time I was on a searching the sense of fear was very heavy upon me I slept on the sofa that I'm sitting on right now for like I would say for months two three months I slept on the sofa because I was terrified to be in my room it was just a sense of fear that was over me, and I just could not do it. I would even hear a voice that say, like, you got to go to your room and go to sleep. And I used to be like, nope, not going, staying on my sofa. And I just couldn't do it. So I was just going through that while I was reading um, the Bible, and I just did not understand what was going on, what I had done, and why it had came back and it was in full effect. But I do remember times where I would do, where I read the Bible stuff, to try to learn stuff, it would happen to me. And I remember giving up on it, but I said, this time I'm not going to give up on it. I, I got to work through it. So, y'all, that feeling was horrible. And if you don't know, you have authority over that 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 fear. And if you guys want to know how to how to bind that in the name of Jesus, let your girl know, because I don't play no games no more. I'm not for play play. So, I remember... Um, I remember reading so much of the gospel that when I was finished, I was crying because I was like, this can't be true. Who would do this person did nothing to nobody? You know, they crucifying people and this in my mind like this dude didn't do nothing, he didn't kill nobody. Bro, y'all let a murderer go. What is wrong with y'all? So I just remember just being like, that's crazy. I remember looking up somebody named Nabil, and he was a Muslim, he converted, and I was just so afraid to give up that aspect of that um, religion, because I, I've always had a fear of hell, and I never wanted to be in hell, and I just didn't, I was confused, I didn't know what was the true, who was the true God, because there's so much confusion, I even tried to even side with God, like, hey God, you know there's so much confusion on this earth that I know because there's so much confusion, you wouldn't really put me in hell. Like, you know how you try to tell yourself stuff like that? Um, I remember Ezra was just really there for, like, questions I have, Ezra would, like, he would literally answer the questions for me. And if he didn't have the answer, he would get it. And the next day he would tell me. There was a, um, a woman that I actually uh, would talk to as well. And I remember she would tell me. Um, story. She told me the story about her that she was in this bad accident. She remembered that her spirit had left her body. She could see her body. I remember she was telling me this and this is somebody I worked with. She didn't have to share that with me. So she'll tell me about that. She'll try to break down the Bible to me. But I knew I had to do work on my end because I had to have the understanding for myself. So Ezra and the woman had gave me all the information they can give me. 
YouTube was giving me and giving me, giving me. I had watched so many videos that I was overflowing. I was scared at work and scared at home, honey. I was just scared all the time. I was like, scared of hell, scared of home. Scared of hell, scared of home. I was just scared. And I remember being like, this is crazy. But I couldn't stop. Like, once I started that search, it was like, ah, I got to keep searching. And then I remember um, told him, I was like, okay. It's, uh, it was like April 19th. And I think I had a video about this. It was April 19th. And I am going to, because at this point, I had all the information I can get. Like, if you ever want to know what I mean, just watch The Case for Christ. You'll research so much that you can't research no more. You got to make a choice. This is you going to believe or you're not going to believe. Faith is believing without seeing. We believe in atoms, molecules, and we can't see atoms. We believe that the, that the wind blows, but we cannot see the wind blow. So at this point, you just got to kind of like, I guess that's where your faith come in. So I remember April 19, you know, I woke up on the sofa, y'all, because I lived on the sofa. And I remember it was Palm Friday. I ain't really know what Palm Friday was. But uh, I was going to find out. I remember staying home and I said I was going to fast. I was like, I'm about to fast. And I didn't know how to fast like for Christians. Because Muslims, they do it for like differently. So I didn't know. And I, went, I didn't want to confuse the two. So I remember I said I wasn't going to eat. I wasn't going to watch TV. I wasn't going to commute with anybody. I wasn't going to do nothing. Except for everything that had to do with Jesus. Because I, it's almost like I had got to a point where I knew... I had to choose. Like, it was it. It's like, choose. You, you got to choose. And um, I remember in my house watching Passion of the Christ. I remember all the things occurred. I remember um, asking God, you know, just to show yourself, reveal yourself to me. Like, I want to I wanna know that you're real. I want to believe you, but I, I, I'm confused. And I remember... I heard a I heard a voice, and y'all, it's not like a voice like, my daughter. It's not like that, okay? And you'll hear. It's almost like some people might think it's your subconscious, and but it ain't you, okay? It ain't you. And it was pretty much like you know, it told me like at a certain time because I think Jesus had died at like three years, like yo, know, Jesus on my balcony, and I did it. I had a sense of peace over me, and I went to this church. Afterwards. I didn't talk to nobody all day long. I remember watching Passion of the Christ and just being like, again, like, who does this to a person? And um, after that happened, I ended up going to church. And then I remember I, I came back home. I felt peace in the decision that I was going, I was striving to. Um, I wish I could tell y'all that the the sense of fear and stuff stopped there, but it did not stop there. It probably got worse. But I just kept wanting to know. At this point, I was seeking him, I, uh, you know, seeking him wholeheartedly, like it says in um, Jeremiah. I was just seeking him. I just wanted to know him. I wanted to know he was there, he was real. So I was believing him in God, but I was still skeptical about Jesus. I know it sounds crazy, I was still skeptical. What they did to him was horrible. I was like, man. Eh. And no one had been able to explain the Trinity to me. So I had asked God to just give me the. I asked my father about the Trinity. He explained it, probably how they explained to him when he was a child. And whoo, went over the head. Um, I didn't get it. So finally, I, God just gave it to me. So I was like, okay, you have the Father. Father came in his image onto earth. It's almost like he had a costume on. His costume was human flesh. And then the Holy Spirit, which is our like our conscious, it keeps us in check. Our Holy Spirit is our best friend. Awesome. Got it. So I was like, okay. So I get the Trinity. So then I was like, what next? So then I, I told myself, I mean, you have to read the Bible, girl. You're gonna have to. So I started reading the Bible. And then I started learning how to pray. I watched videos on prayers and 
uh, God honestly guided me a lot through how to pray, what to do. Um, even with videos popping up, I believe God didn't do that. Like, I want her to watch this one. Um, people telling you how to pray. I have so many notes on the Bible and things that I was reading. And I was like, okay. I, I felt good. By this time, I had met like a whole new... I, I met a guy. And um, I met a guy. And at this point, I am using the skills that I've learned thus far to pray for this person. Because I, I understood that, that this person needed prayer for real. I was on my way, but this person... A little sheep, you know? It's 99 sheep, that one. And God was going to go get that sheep. And if he was going to use a new sheep to go get that little sheep, he was going to do it. So, um, that's what ended up happening. I was just praying over this sheep and helping the sheep. And, um, that sheep actually knew how to pray. I just was forgetting how to. And I said, okay, well, I'm just going to keep on praying. And I started getting, uh, deeper and deeper. And then I had finally made the decision that I want to get baptized. I was like, I want to get baptized. I want to let my father know that he is my everything. And I do believe when you do that, you allow people to see that, hey, this is my father. This is what I'm saying. I'm declaring it. You know, I'm denouncing the other stuff. And this is my father. So I wanted to do that. I remember... Um, Uh, the pastor asked me, he was like, oh, you want to take the new membership course? And I'm not, you know, there's no shade to churches or any church. I was not focused on being a new member. I was focused on being a member of the Book of Life, honey. I'm so sorry. That's how I feel. I wasn't really studying, like, a new membership. Like, let's worry about my salvation first, people. Let's worry about that, and then we do a membership. You know, and that's just what I was focused on. That's not every church. Just sometimes, you know, if you're a pastor and you're watching this, Let's focus on the people's salvation first, okay? So I was like, you know, um, and I know why you do the church. You want them to have fellowship. But save it first, honey. Help save it. Uh, uh, allow God to use you, but keep me close. So I remember I said, I was like, I'm about to get baptized. And I remember I told, uh, I told a lot of people. And I remember I had to tell. I remember I had, I'm so sorry. I remember I had to tell. Um, I remember I had to tell my family. And I think that was just about like almost the hardest thing I had to do because here I am in this family and I had to let my family know like, hey, I'm doing this. I remember, um, I remember just being like, whew, how am I going to do it? I ended up going to, at this time, this is like the second church I've been to. I was going to this church and I met somebody, amazing person, um, just amazing. I'm going to tell you guys all the churches. And she showed me around her church, and she took me um, underneath her wing as far as helping me to tell my parents. She connected me with somebody else who used to be a Muslim. And even though that girl was like, oh, you're a little bit deeper than I was, she was just, she she kind of told me, like, okay, this is how you want to guide it. Let them talk. And so I wanted to invite my family to watch me get baptized, but I knew I was asking for a lot, okay? But I, I wanted them to be a part of it, and so those who wanted to be there were there, and then those who wanted to be there but they didn't get there, you know, things just happen, but I still appreciate you guys, love you guys so much. And um, I ended up um, telling my dad, and um, his reaction, wasn't um like oh, like that it was just kind of like almost like i was lost and he was um he um that i was lost and he wanted to help me to come back but i wasn't lost i really felt it in my heart and um It was different for me because uh, me and my father had always been close. And I, I knew that this was going, it was separating us. And, um, but I knew I could not de deny my father 
um, in heaven for my father on earth. So I had to go through it and I had to tell my father. And that was a part of my process that I had to let him know. So I told my father and he was just like, it just it wasn't the best. I ain't going to details. It wasn't the best. And um, that was it. And uh, I think I remember crying. I was so hurt. I was hurt, but I knew I had to continue on. Um, I remember um, after that happened, because my baptism was actually up. I remember um, at this point, I'm still like, I'm struggling a little bit. And I, you know, I was praying and at this point, Ezra had left the job and now I'm the person who is like at the job and I had taken over the services that we were having. And I'm like, I'm so new, how am I, how am I helping to lead these people? And I'm so new, I don't know anything, but Ezra was like, he told me that, he said, when you first got there, God told me, um, God, he said God had led him and was like, let her come to you. And he said that when he, it was time for him to leave, Ezra told me that God told him that it's okay, you can leave her. She's okay. Me and Ezra boo-hooed, cried. And, um, and I, I stood on my, my prayer with God and I thanked him for what he was doing. And I just asked him to just be there for me during those times where... I cry um, in the Bible, in Psalms 56, it says that God collects all your tears and your sorrows and he collects them in a bottle. And uh, he got a lot of mine, I'm just gonna say that. And I remember um, it was time I, like, I'll do a before a baptism story because that story's crazy too. But I remember um, the next morning my baptism, I just, I didn't really wanna like, I wasn't gonna go to church, period. I wasn't, I was just gonna show up at my baptism. And for whatever reason, and um, I heard somebody call my name that morning. And it was like, Karima. And so my sister came down for my baptism. I'm just like, who is this that's calling my name? So I was like, I said, huh? And um, the, uh, my friend, he, like my friend, he didn't call my name. Like nobody had called my name, okay? point blank period like my sister didn't call my name uh, uh the person who I was praying for did not call my name like nobody had called my name they were all like nobody called their name and I was like yes y'all did y'all playing too much I thought it was very weird um but I also knew I had asked God to uh, speak to me I had been praying for it so when I heard my name called, it was like, girl, you got to get out of this bed and you better go get baptized. So I went, I got everything together. I went to church and everything. And after that, me and my sister, my sister helped me. I mean, so beautiful, y'all, so beautiful. So um, my sister was not even the same um, faith of me, believing the same God as me. She literally, we went all over the place looking for a, a shower cap and caps, swim caps, and I get this hair wet, honey, okay? I wanted to look nice and... She searched for that stuff for me. She helped me so much. She she had really been there. And um, I remember we I ended up getting um, baptized. And after I, um, I remember going, I was terrified. Cause my dad had told me like, my dad told me once I got baptized, it is a sin that God is never going to forgive me for. And when he said God, he means Allah will never forgive you for. And that's it. And that we're we're talking about souls and like he made it seem like like you gonna go to hell. And um, even though I still had minor things going on, I just led with my heart and I just knew what I was doing was right. And I got baptized. And um, I've never in my life um, felt what I felt when I got baptized. I do believe I was gifted with the Holy Spirit. And I think I, at that point, God was like, I'm going to guide her. And I remember going to the back, because, you know, you got to change your clothes and stuff like that. And I had an overwhelming uh, sense of joy and peace. And I was crying, but I was trying not to make up, mess up my makeup. I was crying, but I was happy. And... We went up going out to eat, and I just felt very calm. 
I felt like I was taken care of. I was loved. And that definitely was like the jump start to everything. Um, when I got baptized, um, it does not mean when you get baptized, you're not going to get angry and things aren't going to occur. But um, after being baptized, it was just like, I was like, if my slate is clean, I don't want to sin. But I was trying my best not to sin because I was like, let me see if I can be perfect, but ugh, we're not perfect. And I was just like, all right, this is it. It's me and God. And I kept researching. I kept searching. I don't know how I got to how I am today. And I just felt a sense of peace, a piece of love that I no longer, I didn't search for a man to give me any love at all. Like, goodbye, I don't care nothing about you. That everything was about Jesus and I was going to put Jesus first. And even when the enemy tries to put doubt in my mind, I go back to Jesus. Um, that God will show himself in many things he has shown me that I will tell you guys about it when, it, when God allows me to release it. But I just remember not feeling that emptiness no more. And I know you guys probably, like some of you guys who just watching this because you're searching. I'm not kidding y'all. From a person who was raped, a person who was abused, a person who was close to suicide, um, that feeling of being filled is like none other. I wake up every day filled with God, the Holy Spirit is guiding me, even when the enemy tries to do things like he's there and you can feel God's presence. He's always there uh, to want to know him more. I just hunger and thirst for him. I go to church Tuesday, and everybody doesn't have to do this. I go to church like Tuesday through Sunday. And it's only because I haven't joined a small group on Monday. I'm going to find one, though. To him just changing me completely to wanting to give back to the community, wanting to help other people, to just diving into the Bible, dissecting it, and actually reading it for knowledge. I'm actually reading it all over again because before I think I was just reading to get some answers. Now I'm just reading it to just soak in everything that's saying, to learn scriptures. Um, I have people, it happened so quick to me. I've had mentors that have taught me how to properly pray. And I know everybody's like, it's a certain way to pray. Um, there is a certain way to pray. And sometimes when you are gifted in certain things or you're anointed in certain things and call, God calls you for certain things, there are certain things that you have to do. You have to pray. You have to ask for it. And some prayers you, you just like, my prayers are deep and and just being filled with him to just finally to tell basically the biggest one of the biggest things was like i like my father on, on earth i love you to death but i said oh, it's about my father on heaven i was ready to walk away from my family i was ready to give everything up for jesus i wanted to know him i had gotten to know god and i wanted to i just wanted to know like jesus are you real and through and through, there were several things that just gave me an indicator that he was there. He was there. He was there at every aspect. Like, when I was in Texas, he was there. Everything, I was, he was there. I endured, but he was there. He watched me. Everything's a part of his perfect plan, that what he does for your life. And he was just there the whole time. Even to this point right now, like he just did something for me the other day that me and my friend literally screamed about. He was, I mean, he's just been there, covering me, protecting me, blessing me, protect, like just being there for me. So that's my testimony. I've always had an emptiness. So it wasn't that, um, it wasn't nothing like, I guess, whatever, somebody messaged me, it wasn't nothing crazy like that. I just always knew that there was more. I felt like it's more, I, I wasn't getting whatever it was. I always knew that there was other entities because I had been tormented by them for years and nothing ever explained it. I mean, if you don't believe in Jesus, I'm just going to give you a couple of indicators that he's real. If you are watching this video and you have sleep paralysis, call on the name of Jesus. They're going to flee. They're going to be gone. 
calling. Just keep calling. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Just say Jesus. And if you want to test it, sit there. Say some other name. I bet you sit there. That's one indicator. Think about in your life, have you, if you ever had anything that happened and you just couldn't explain it. As you're like, what is that? That's God. Just think about it. Just, just think about it. These are just key indicators if you don't believe in Jesus. I want you to believe in it. I want you to believe in him because he's there and he loves you. He has changed me completely from the way I put myself out there on Instagram. Like, hey, he's changed me completely. Even my friends be like, it, it's quick. He did it quickly, y'all. I went from like preschool to like a senior in high school real quick. And uh, he, he's still changing me. And that's, that's my testimony. I'm not a perfect person. He still works on me. He still loves me. He still guides me. He still pushes me. Um, I want you to understand, even as a child of, of God, you're still going to go through things, period. This journey is not the easiest journey. Um, especially if you listen to, like, when I kept saying that, Every time I was searching, I got tor tormented more. That's because the enemy don't want you to know him. He don't want you to know him. He wants you to continue the life that you have him. So this is in Ro uh, Romans 8, 17. It says, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to sh share his glory, we must also share his suffering. So I want to tell you, just because you are, uh, you know, you find yourself in your life, okay, I'm I'm going to have a relationship with God. I'm going to have a relationship with Jesus. That doesn't mean that all your worries go bye-bye. That does not, that's not what it means. That we are sharing in his suffering. But I promise you from all I've been through, and I've been through a lot. I mean, almost near-death experiences that I can tell you about later, that I have been through it all. It probably ain't nothing that you could tell me that I can't be like, oh, that was me. And the sense of peace that I have with Jesus, how he has been with me, held me, how my father has like loved me completely, how he gives me a calm over me, how I just decided that I just surrender and I choose him. So that is my testimony. So you got it. There's my testimony. You probably like it wasn't all that I thought it was going to be, but it is what it is. That's my, my testimony. I just had been through a lot, and I was very empty. Now I'm full and over full. I'm more busy now than I was when I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. He calms me. I talk to my Holy Spirit all day long, and um, I just thank God for it. I hope that even watching this video, you find whatever you are looking for in God that um, you should surrender yourself to Jesus. I'm not asking you to say, oh, I'm a Piscatarian, I'm a whatever. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm, I'm asking that you allow him in your heart and you actually pray and be persistent with your prayers. Do it more than once, more than twice. Keep doing it if you really want it. Keep doing it. That you ask him to show himself to you so you'll know him, so you can have that peace. If you're hurting, ask him for that peace. Keep doing it. And do the work on your end. Because remember, you're lost. He's not. You're the one that's lost. You have to do the work. You got to get in his word. His love is in his word. I, he's even told me, my love for you is in my word. Everything you want to know is in his word. You start with the four gospels. And if, you, if after the four gospels, you want to start with something else, you can go Proverbs, you read uh, uh, one a day, Psalms. You can start with... Genesis, uh, you could go to Genesis after the four Gospels, but read the four Gospels first. I think it is a God. And just allow him into your heart. So, brothers and sisters, that is my testimony. That is what I have for you guys. If you have any questions, comments, concern, clarification, you can ask me. Um, I pray that whoever is watching this testimony, that you, you find that peace and love within God. Because he's amazing. That you know Jesus for yourself and he guides you. Um, I guess that's it.